I don't, like, sorry, sorry to our listeners. This, that's not me being this racist. This uncontrollable laughing is brought to you <laughs> yeah. by Longbottom Leaf. <laughs> if you need to find everything hilarious, Longbottom Leaf might be for you. Exactly, yes. <laughs> And I, I want to, like, not apologize, but just let you guys know, it's not me being racist, it's just me being slightly ignorant for the moment. <laughs> Warning, the following show will spoil the hell out of George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire books and the TV show A Game of Thrones. Also, you're probably going to find a fuck ton of bad language. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Death and boobies, 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 death and boobies. Welcome back to the Ironwood Network Book Club. I am your host, Widow Wolfsbane. With me as normal is Lady Wyvern, and as always is Maester Ironwood. Um, yeah, because you and I are here normally, but not always. So, and today we're discussing... John 5. Yep. You guys having fun with that? You guys doing all right? What's going on? I do like some John 5. I do like some John 5. It's, it's kind of close to the Jackson 5, but a little bit better. I was thinking more like I was like thinking Jackson more five like Johnny 5. I don't know what Johnny 5 is. Whoa! Whoa! whoa, whoa okay. Whoa, whoa. All right, even Peanut Gallery over here is getting all mad at me for not knowing. Wow. No, we decided he has a new name. Oh. Alicia gave him a new name. What's your new name? Lady Wyvern gave what's him your, a new name. What's, what's his new name? The Three Finger Hob. He's the cook at the Night's Watch. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> the finger. Okay, so Hob. Yeah, we, we've got the Three Finger Cook at the Night's Watch with us. <laughs> Bam. It's appropriate. I don't think he took his off on his own with the, a knife. No. How did he Hob lose his Hob lost it in a battle. In a battle. Okay. Well, that's pretty badass. I'd go with that. <laughs> But so, yeah, you don't know Johnny Five. No, Have Johnny you... Five is alive. No disassemble. The fucking robot. No. Wow, you oh Puerto Ricans have sheltered lives. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. I, I know. I know. Wally. Wait. Oh wait. Is that the one with the robot where he's like escaping from people and they're like shooting at him and the government's trying to get him back? Yes. yes! Oh! <laughs> I know that one. I've seen that. Yeah, short, short, <laughs> yeah, short circuit. The fucking yeah. coolest robot movie ever short made. Circuit. Okay. God. Okay, yeah, I do know that one. Okay. Oh my god. I'm about to have a heart attack here. Sorry. Between the movies she hasn't seen and now you not ever seeing that, I was going to be like, oh my god, the world is not coming to an end. Yeah, no, okay, I've seen that one. My mom had me watch it with her a couple years ago. Oh, I've only so. seen it like a hundred times. Yeah, I love that movie. I mean, it was ador- and then the second one's even funnier. I mean, it was pretty. It was pretty adorable. The, the robot's adorable. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No disassemble Johnny Five. Yeah. No <laughs> yes. disassemble. <laughs> okay, I remember that. It's now. when he's real learning yeah. about life and death. Yes. Because he killed the cricket. I yep. love how he reads the books. <laughs> yep. He's a robot. He can read fast. Yes, he does. Yeah, he reads very fast. Oh, I like robots. I have a kindred, sort of. I have, we're, we're kindred spirits. We both read an encyclopedia set. There you go. he did that in the show. He did. That was funny. <laughs> All right. All, All right. right. So, so, John 5. <laughs> yeah. John 5. We're at the wall, and uh, we've got some graduates today. Getting yeah. some caps and gowns. Some people aren't as some excited. Aren't. Yeah. Some, people, some people aren't graduating. Yeah, well, you know, they probably still suck a little bit, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, well, except for one. Except for one. He kind of sucks at soldiering. He sucks at soldiering, but he doesn't suck as a person. No, but he didn't pass the test, so he failed the class. So he doesn't get to graduate. Yeah, well, that's on him for... Not doing his homework. Yeah, not yeah. doing his homework. I mean, it's also kind of on Alistair because... He's a shit teacher. Yeah, yeah, that. So, and I'm assuming Randall's probably a shit teacher, too. Because <laughs> I'm sure that, I'm sure I have this, this weird hunch that Alistair... And Randall have the same teaching style. Yeah, which is non-existent. Yeah, non-existent. But and he's the only one who knows. Really he's the out. only one who knows how to use a sword. So, yeah. So yeah, their teaching style is pretty much like you know how you like throw your kid in the pool to teach them to swim. Just yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna lose today. Throw but, except bench. for Alistair and Randall, is probably like put some sharks in the pool and then throw the kid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> make, make it to the alarm before the shark gets you. <laughs> I've only known of one person who learned how to swim that way. Really? Yeah, my little sister. Oh. She goes, hey, mom, watch, and jumps in the deep end at three years old. And everyone's standing around the pool because it's my grandfather's birthday party. Well, maybe they should have jumped in the pool. Everyone, well, it was like one of those shock factors things, but everyone's watching, and she kept her, she kept 
her head down, and she went from the deep end to the shallow end and came up and said, See, Mommy, I can do it. I remember her telling me that and being like, Wow. You're okay. a moron. <laughs> and then and then there's me at four years old who's like, I can swim across the pool and then start the, the shallow end and go to the deep end and then start drowning like five feet away from the edge of the pool. And yeah. So I was drowned in Puerto Rico. <laughs> and to my brother's probably great regret, he actually saved me. Yeah. Yeah. My mom and my mom and somebody else were gonna jump in to go get me. Mm-hmm. And then my brother just kinda grabbed me by my swimming suit and like pulled me to the edge. And so they didn't actually have to get in. Like, they just, my mom just, like, laid down on the thing and, like, pulled me up and handed me to my dad. Yeah. And then I was like, what just happened, you guys? That was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things I've done to get some, some Dame Bramage through the years. Yeah, we've Explained noticed. so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So much. All right, so John 5. John 5. <laughs> so, uh, who wants to give us a, a quick synopsis? Is that, I mean, you don't? That means I don't. All right. Quick synopsis of the chapter. Uh, we start out with uh, Sir Alistair grumbling that he has to let eight of the idiots go. I'm surprised and, that it's eight. And graduate. There's not a lot of people at the wall. Yeah, they're not like just like showing up in droves. There's probably like a class like a dozen. Yeah, I know, but they have five people coming, so why did he get rid of three extra? Because, Because they, they had earned the right to become real Night's Watch people. And because there's still a couple people that aren't graduating that need a lot more attention. They need to not ha- have... I need a Sam all that way. He doesn't have what it takes to swing a sword, Can I hate I to say. Can I fucking do the synopsis? <laughs> You're getting guess. as bad as her. <laughs> Lady Wyvern is taking over Widow Wolfsbane today. <laughs> Oh, she that, started it! Does that mean that I have to be conscientious and, like, tell people, like, get back on yes, topic? Yes, you have to be the nagging nanny. Okay, today. I can do you that. You guys are going to switch roles. <laughs> I can <Ooh>. try. <laughs> I think this will be fun. Yeah, your tangents are going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, eight people, including John, have, have moved on, and they celebrate with some wine in the snowball fight. And then, uh, later that night, John goes for a late night ride on his horse with Ghost. And gets to thinking about Winterfell and how he could just, like, head on down the road because he's still allowed to do that until he takes his vows. But then decides, nope, gotta head back to Castle Black because he has something to do. Where he goes and has a late night conversation with Maester Aemon about the potential of a certain fat lordling also passing on into the Night's Watch. And John shows off some... Rather impressive lordling skills, I will say. Yes. I know Ben says that John didn't get any lordling training at Winterfell, but seems to me like John got some pretty decent lordling training because he makes a impassioned and excellent case for Samwell becoming a member of the Night's Watch. He does lots of good uh, backing. As, like, as, as, backing as Maester stuff. Aemon would say, your brain is as deft as your sword. Mm-hmm. And that's where we leave off. All right. All right. Who's got something, I suppose, at the beginning of the chapter? Oh, I don't know. Do we have a weather report? I mean, it is a nice, clear, crisp night over at the wall. It's the wall. It's fucking cold. There's a weather report. It's it's, it's cold cold as tits out there. I just had to ask. It's It's as cold as a witch's titty. Yeah, it's cold as a witch's tit out there, but the stars are out and shining, and the the moon is glancing. The stars are big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. No, because we don't like Texas that much. <laughs> it's a song. I know. And it's from Big Adventure. <laughs> I know. Don't piss off our listeners in Texas. <laughs> the sky or the stars are bright, deep in the heart of Texas. Yeah, I, I know. Yep. Um, so we start off with Sir Alistair being, being a dumbass. bad way to start a chat. <laughs> yeah. We just start with Sir Alistair yelling. Like, that's our introduction to the chapter. Yep. Telling them that y'all suck. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I physically have to, like, so I suppose that's how. They will call you men of the Night's Watch, but you're not. You're fucking boys. Yep. Still, still green. green. Still green and stinking a summer. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I would love to stink a summer. If only, you know. I would, I would settle for fucking together. spring, let alone fucking summer. That's fair. New York needs to get its shit together. It's still fucking wintertime. <laughs> this is part of the weather report. 
<laughs> you asked for the weather report. <laughs> Not our weather. <laughs> yeah, but it's April, it's April, and the poor male lady's still wearing her fucking winter coat. I know she's like, walking around like a perk on Everest. <laughs> like, I wear my winter coat till my birthday. I think you mean a Sherpa. So. Yes, thank you. Yeah, because a Sherpas Bur- wear because burkas? a Burke is not a person. Do Sherpas wear burkas? No, <laughs> okay. they wear coats. What am I thinking? What is a burka then? What am I thinking? That's of? what the Muslim women wear. The, whole, the what, full black it's, thing. Oh, okay. You think of a parka? Yes. <laughs> yes for me, I'm thinking of a parka. Wow. <laughs> Listen, I got my stuff in trouble. I haven't finished my coffee yet. <laughs> okay, I'll get there, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, sorry, sorry to our listeners. This, that's not me being racist. This uncontrollable laughing is brought to you by Longbottom Leaf. <laughs> if you need to find everything hilarious, Longbottom Leaf might be for you. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and I want to like not apologize, but just like you know, it's not me being racist. It's just me being slightly ignorant for the moment. <laughs> You are crying. <laughs> oh my god. Oh boy. Oh yeah, my first note on here is good to see that Sir Alistair still sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you finally got his name right and you've stopped harassing this Alistair guy. I I finally met Alistair and he's a nice dude. Yeah, Alistair Mad Eye Moody, he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Oh. oh, when he, when when he's not being you know confined into a trunk and being portrayed by David Tennant for nine months yeah. for nine yeah. I mean, who would my but you know what I, I I would, would not it. mind being locked in his trunk. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm a guy and I still wouldn't mind being locked in David Tennant's trunk. So yeah, <laughs> now we're getting saucy. <laughs> oh, I dropped my pen. Which, by the way, makes me want to watch my first Marvel thing ever. Which one? Jessica Jones. Oh, because yes. Because it's got David Tennant and it is the bad guy. Yes. Yeah. He he makes a phenomenal bad oh, guy. Oh, I'm sure he does. I love him. He also is in that movie Vampires Suck. And it's just, I've I seen know, that he's movie. fantastic. I don't know what yeah. That is. He's fantastic in that movie, too, even though he plays a little pissant. So. I don't know what any of that is. But anyway, so the boys are still stinking of summer and they're green. Yep. They get to go but have a nice them, feast. But eight of them get to move on mm-hmm. and become full-fledged members of the Night's Watch. So they grab, they grab some wine and they're drinking and they're having a snowball fight. Mm-hmm. And Alistair's like, you fucking morons. And Sam's yep. crying under the Christmas tree. Sam's, stand, yeah, Sam's standing <laughs> yeah. in the corner by himself with his dunce cap on because he's not moving on. No. no. Sam he, has, he knows it. He has a long way to go, though. I think he, has, he also knows that he's lost his bodyguard at this point. because Well, hey, yeah, yeah, he's going to get the shit beat out of him because this new group of kids is not going to take it easy. Well, not just that, him. but, Maybe. like, Gren and whatnot is staying. Yeah. Like, the ones that, like... Like the ones John, that are like, like John's friends. Like the ones that like the ones that like John coerced into not Harassing beating him. up Sam yeah. are staying with Sam. Like not yeah. their actual friends. Rast is staying there. Yeah. Yeah. So. And Rast is the one that had um ghost's mouth at his throat. Yep. But yeah, and I think I I was thinking I just thought about this. Maybe that's why, like, even though they're only gaining five recruits, even if all of these guys are not quite good enough to get past. Alistair may just be getting rid of the people who would protect um, Sam. That's very oh, it's possible. Very, yeah. very likely what's going on because Alistair Thorne is a fucking douchebag. Yeah. So he'll do anything to split them up so he can pick on Little Miss Piggy. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. So he's gotten rid of all of Piggy's wives. Yep. And yeah, that's Sir Alistair's a douchebag. And yeah. Lord Gior knows it. <sighs> so they get a special feast. I mean, we're talking, there's actual dessert. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's actually like well prepared food. And, and there's good. fucking yeah. there's meat. Yeah, yeah, not like, turnip stew. Yeah, no, it's real good. There food. is there is turnips, but it's mashed turnips loaded with butter. That just sounds mm-hmm. disgusting. Well, I, it, it, it sounds like mashed potatoes to me. It's like the except it is turnips. Yeah, I'd rather have mashed potatoes because I'm not a big turnip fan. You're yeah. not a big vegetable fan. I love vegetables. I just don't like the vegetables you like. Yeah, I know. We I like the exact I opposite. like carrots and corn and peas and, and green I, beans, and you like all of the other vegetables. <laughs> that's I mean, that's true. Fair. <laughs> she, she, she always says she's like, you don't like vegetables because I won't eat the vegetables she likes, but so I eat, get all the eat vegetables. other vegetables. Yeah, he's like, gonna get all of the vegetables. Like she won't eat peas when I cook peas, I but I love peas. peas. Also, and I, I love, love peas. Brussels sprouts, and he can't stand Ugh. the smell of them when I, I can't cook stand them. Brussels sprouts. Yeah, it's not a vegetable. It's the just only a, thing. It's no, a, it's a punishment. 
Bring it back in? Yeah. Bring it back in. So yeah, bit, they get a feast. They get uh, frozen bro- blueberries. They get with, ice cream. Yes. With ice cream. cream. Yep. And so they, they get, get ice so it's kind of like Froyo. <laughs> yeah. They got they had some Froyo habit in. You would think that they would have, yeah. And, and they, uh, they make the, the comment that the food is straight from the Lord Commander's table. So yes. they're eating as well as the Lord Commander tonight. Because it's a celebration. Yep. So they're, they're celebrating a good time. I really don't think it's much of a celebration because I really, I really don't think the boys, the boys are too cocky to move forward. But that's just me. And that's like me in high school. These guys are too dumb to graduate. <laughs> yeah. Kind of I mean, thing. You calling John dumb? Too. He John's was there qualified. Well, John, of, of course, John is. But arrogant. the only reason John he's has, overqualified right. is because he has lordly training. Yeah. yeah, but John has the right to be arrogant. I mean, John is probably the most qualified person in the Night's Watch, except for maybe Gior Mormont and Maester Eamon. Right. Yeah. But he's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> At his age, I mean. And but uh, his cockiness will get the best of him one day. Hopefully, will it? oh, maybe. I. I mean. Either it's going to get the best of him, it might not kill him, but or, it'll be one of those or things. Or they where may gonna, kick it out of him. Yeah, I say it'll, it, it'll end up turning into like a blanket party or something. Or maybe he'll temper it himself. That'd be nice. Grow up a little I'm, bit. I'm just saying that I have no patience for teenage boys, and that's exactly what they are. Just wait till there's some teenage girls around. Oh, Sansa. That's so much worse. Oh, Sansa. Yeah. Right. Maybe I'm comparing him to the guy that was bragging about being in a fist fight over a game of cards. Oh anyway. But yeah, so John notices that Sam's not tangent. the piece. Good job. You're doing good at your job. I'm trying to be I'm trying to do good at your job too. But so not, John not doing so good. John notices that Sam's not at the feast. Like oh, at course, one of the other tables. Of course he's not because No, he's, but they're having their feast oh, at the same time and everyone else is having dinner. Sam, not the yeah, meal Sam hall. doesn't miss meals. Yeah, and Sam's, <laughs> yeah. And Sam's not at the the dining hall during right. this meal time. Uh so he notices that and he gets kind of upset about it, but he's kinda of like, eh, he's an adult, he'll be fine. He'll live. Yeah, so then he goes that's one when more he goes night. one more night with that yeah, he'll he'll be okay if he misses a meal. It won't kill him. Might hurt his stomach a little bit, but it won't kill him. Yep. Um so then he goes to the stable after that. After everyone's sitting there, like, joking and laughing and stuff like that, he goes to the stable, saddles up his mare, and all the other horses, like, Ghost is with him. All the horses are freaking out because there's a wolf in the, well, yeah, the stable. There's a, yeah, there's yeah. A fox oh, in the yeah. house. Yeah. So they're, like, kicking at walls and stuff like that, and his horse is just like, eh, it's whatever, I know this guy, he's chill. Yeah, the wolf's cool. Yeah. The one horse in the world that's just like, oh, best friends with the wolf, you guys. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. It's a good horse to be, the one that's best friends with the wolf. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. you won't die. Oh yeah, so then John takes his uh, his nightly stroll. He goes out. His his evening constitutional. Yeah. Get some get his alone time for the day and he gets far enough away from the castle that he can't see the castle anymore. Like the castle's on the other side of a of a hill. Yep. Um, and he sees a road which heads off to Winterfell yes. and the neck and River Run and the and Vale. South and South Landing. and South we go. Yeah, the mountains of Dorne, which he's never seen. And he starts yep. thinking about like all the things that he'll never see after he takes his vows. Yep. And well, because it's his last chance to leave. Yeah, and that even if he doesn't go see those things, he could go home to Winterfell and see his brothers. And mm-hmm. he can do that because he's not there as a punishment or anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's so got no he's, crime. he's free to go until he takes his vows. But did yes. you guys realize he didn't? But he, but he said Lady Catelyn's there, so he has no idea Catelyn's not in Winterfell. Yeah, yeah. If he had known, I feel like at this point, if he had known that Catelyn was, he's there, on the road. He, he, he's gone already. He's <laughs> yeah. like, nope, that's all right. I'm, I'm yeah. not, I'm not taking these vows. Yeah, if he, if he had known that Lady Catelyn would never again come to Winterfell, he'd go I think home. He'd be going home right now. Absolutely, mm-hmm. he'd want to be with us. Which brothers. would be so good for the Stark family. They might actually fucking survive. I was gonna say that yeah. Rob might live. Yes, Rob yeah, Rob probably, probably, yeah, probably John, already been John alive. might talk him out of getting married. Yes. Yeah, John, John, would've, would've John would have him, him, yeah, him of his yeah, commitments. Like John would have reminded him. John would be like, listen, you can this better is not how, but this you is not, This is not how dad would do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, you can bang her, that's fine. But is it? Actually, yes, because Tywin says it very much so when he arranges for Jane Westerling to seduce Rob. Rob. He yeah. goes, he's very much his father's son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So. So it is It is their way to do that. Um, yes. Sucks to be the Starks. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucking Starks. Dumb they're, as rocks. Yes, they're, they're pretty fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
But so that whole happens. He's, and so he's sitting there and he realized, like, it's not until after he thinks about Catelyn that he is just like, I don't have a home there. Yeah, because not of her. going to that fucking place again. Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't have a home there because she has no place for him there. And then he doesn't have a place at King's Landing because he's a bastard. Yeah. yeah. He should really go kill Catelyn. He really should just go kill Catelyn. Yeah. No one will know. Make look like, in, the, in those days, it was easy for people to just disappear. Oh, yeah, because Never hear from forensics again. weren't a thing. <laughs> exactly. And that, that's fine. So he does that, and he's sitting there thinking about what, how he has no home. And then he's like, you know what? He does have a home. And then this is where he, like, very specifically turns his horse around. And, it like, I like the way that they phrase, like, how George phrases it in the book, is that he wheeled his horse around and started for home. Yep. Like, he was kind of, yeah, like, for like looking yeah, yeah. for both places. And then the very next sentence is that he crested the rise and you could see the, the chambers of the Lord Commander's room were, were lit. Because mm-hmm. he's going, his home is back at mm-hmm. the Night's Watch now because he's got brothers there. Yeah, where he's his brothers are. Yeah, where his brothers are. Yeah. Exactly. Is there any importance to him thinking about trying to figure out who his mother was? I think it's interesting. I mean, it's, I mean, it's just, it's something that's always been on his mind. It's all, right? yeah, it's Who always his mother always is, something that his dad won't talk about. Why it. Ned A left her, mm-hmm. B won't talk about her. Yeah. Why, mm-hmm. why is Ned too money. ashamed to talk about her? Right. Is what he thinks. Yeah. Which is quite possible. Yeah, but not likely. Yeah. No, if, if he had been forced to leave John's mother, like against his will, basically, then mm-hmm. I could see him being ashamed of that. Probably. Yeah. Of yeah. actually being doing that. Being ashamed of not standing up for his for, own belief and being right. coerced. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. So I could see him being ashamed for that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, that's a possibility that, that he is actually ashamed. Oh, I just thought of a point that we skipped over a couple times. That you skipped Three over? times? No, we, we all kind of skipped over it a little bit. Three times, I think, in this chapter, maybe only twice, they talk about Benjen was... The first ranger and at the John wall. Says yeah, he this is, is very. This is very much a Chekhov's gun chapter with yeah. the whole Benjamin thing. <laughs> yeah. like, you don't spend an entire fucking chapter talking about how Benjamin Stark is probably, probably dead, but maybe still alive, to not eventually, at some point in the fucking future books, Bring pay that, that off. Yeah. Yeah. Like you have to. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. everyone's like, "Oh, well, he used to be first ranger." And he goes, "Is yeah. or he was first ben- ranger?" Benjamin was the best first ranger. Is, is the best first right. ranger. <laughs> yeah, but even if he's still alive above the wall and he doesn't come back, they're still gonna have to replace him. Well, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. there's, there's probably already a, an acting first yeah. ranger. So yeah, which is my theory is the second ranger. They should have a second. They should have a second ranger. They I'm sure they do have a second ranger. ranger. Yeah, why did they ever mention him? Because he's because also he's in. not. He's oh. a red shirt. He doesn't matter. <laughs> he wasn't cool enough to be the first ranger. So stop picking on the red shirts, you guys. <laughs> they all die anyways. Look, red shirts. I mean, whatever. So in our story, the red shirts are the Lannisters. So I'm fine with picking on the red shirts. All right, all right. I, if we're gonna, pick, if we're making them, <laughs> I actually, I feel like with the way Catelyn's behavior is, the Starks are the red shirts. She really, yeah. Mm. I mean, we want the red shirts to be the Lannisters, but I don't think that's how that's happening because where the books stand at the end, there are still three Lannisters alive. If only Catelyn were a fucking red shirt. I wish. I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> if only she was a red shirt from like the first couple chapters. Yeah, but yeah, John's John's still very touchy about Uncle Benjamin. Yes. Oh yeah. Well, he oh, doesn't yeah. want to believe his, the one adult that he feels is the only adult that's ever believed in him is mm-hmm. gone. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. He he was very close to Uncle Benjamin mm-hmm. and Uncle yeah. Benjamin thought he would make a good brother of the Night's Watch. So Yeah. I mean, he also tried to warn him like this may not be what you want. Don't do it. Yeah. Right. But not exactly what you think. I mean, but it, it I mean it shows here that it is it is what he wants. Like do, he's been there for a little while. I, do you think Okay, go ahead, because I, I have a question I want to pose, too, so go ahead. Okay. Do you think that um, if the N plus A equals J theory is true, do you think Benjen knew about Ashara? Almost certainly. So do you think maybe that's why Ben kept an, Benjen kept an eye on John? And why he may have tried to convince him not to join the Night's right. Watch, because... He knew. He well, because remember, there. Benjen tells him, you have no idea... What you're giving up. Right. Yeah. So I have no doubt that Ben, whoever John's true parents are, mm-hmm. whether it's Rhaegar and Lyanna, whether it's Brandon and Ashara, or whether it's Ned and Ashara, mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. I have no doubt that Benjen knows exactly who it is. Right. Because he says very clearly, you, you have no, you idea, have what no idea what you're giving up. You know it would be nice? Mm-hmm. If Benjen came back just long enough to tell John who his parents are and Brand 3000 dies. <laughs> 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 what was your question? Okay, so in our last chapter, well, two chapters ago okay. with Ben. Okay. How Ben said that, that John didn't get lordly training. Yeah. Like, Rob did. So are we jabbing at Ben right now? At, which, it's not really a jab. It's actually okay. it's actually a question. Because it seems later on in this chapter, like, John did get some lordly training. I mean, he's very, very smart. Political he's thinking. political about it. He's very political yeah. about it. He's very... Things that, like, you would think that not he's only well would Mr. Lewin teach, but also Ned would teach him the kind of things that he was talking about. Yeah. And, but also, Gior Mormont very specifically singles John out to be his basically next in command, right? So right, yes. the person like his his lord commander in training. Yeah, yes. and he would not pick I mean he might well, pick well, Sidney for here's my, here's my, here's I don't my, think he'd have picked a robber for it. Here's my question. If Ned couldn't personally train John in the ways of being the lord of a castle because of his marriage to Catelyn and the assumption that their children are the rightful heirs. Yep. And John Is Castle. it possible that when Ned, when John decided to go to the Night's Watch and Ned understanding that the king can basically write you out of the Night's Watch if he wants to, like Stannis and Rob both try to do for John. Mm-hmm. So can say, okay, you're no, your, your vows no longer needs to be fulfilled. You can leave and reinherit lands and stuff. Is it possible that Ned and your Mormont exchanged ravens in that? three weeks at Winterfell before they left saying, Hey, uh, John needs some training as like a Lord of a castle. Mm-hmm. Um, quick boy. What do you think about me sending him up to you? Even if they didn't send. Well, I, I don't know because John made the decision to go up mm-hmm. and right. Ned, while then- Ned, Ned was disappointed in it, but I don't Ned's quote unquote honor and whatever. I don't think he would try and give John a step up through somebody else. Like he would do what he could without Catelyn knowing. Well, that's what I'm saying. But so I don't know if I don't like, think it's about giving John a step up. What well, I think it's about is getting John the training that he needs. Mm-hmm. Right. So he's not allowed to do it because Catelyn can't see him like giving John yeah. all of the same training that he gives Rob yeah. in running a castle because John's just a bastard. So why does he need to run a castle? Right. Yeah. So. When he no. finds out that John's going to go to the Night's Watch anyway, is it possible that he writes ahead to Jor Mormont, who he knows personally? Right. I wouldn't even be surprised if he didn't necessarily write ahead and like do ravens back and forth because that take that can take weeks. Ravens can fly back and forth between Winterfell and the Wall in like in a day days. or two. Okay, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. They're, right. they're only like, like a couple hundred. They're only like a few hundred miles apart. Okay, so so I mean, so yeah, that could be. I would it's also very think, possible. Yeah, I say because I would also think that maybe he just gave Yorin a note, or no, Yorin went south with them, didn't they? Or did he take them up? Yorin went up with them. Yeah, so I would think like even if he just gave him like a note without John when John wasn't like right well, there, but like here, some, give this to he, give this to gold. G or Mormont. Yeah, and it's just like a, a nice. Like, oh no, because because Yorin wasn't at no Yorin wasn't at Winterfell. No, okay. He the, the best you could have the best he could have done was have Benjen ask. Okay, and and he could trust Benjen to do that and have Benjen be like, well, here's a note, like because Benjen's just a brother of the Night's Watch, so if yeah. a brother of the Night's Watch asks Gior for, for a favor, favor. It doesn't mean it doesn't really mean anything. But if he comes in with a seal of Winterfell, well, in his Benjen's hand, first ranger. I mean, he's part of the command team, so yeah. it does mean something if Benjen asks. Right, that's, but that's, he, Benjen can't be asking favors for family for a family member, right? Because there yeah. is no he can't do family special. outside of the black. Right, yeah. exactly. But yeah. I could see. I mean, I don't know. It just it just seems like a good way to get John the training that he would need to be no, a it, lord. It absolutely uh-huh. is, is for but... Ned to. You know, because I have a feeling that Ned and Gior are in constant communication anyway, mm-hmm. being the, the the warden of the North and the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. And because yeah, Ned already knows that, like Ned already knows about like Mance Raider's movements. Mm-hmm. He already That's knows true. about like the dwindling number of people at the Wall. So I mean, so so I'm going to send you 
uh, 30 horses and five bushels of turnips. And by the way, would you be able to make sure John gets a little extra, like, yeah. monthly training? Like, <laughs> he has BT Doves. Like, you'll act, you'll, like, you'll actually like him. Like, I've been training him up. Like, I think yeah. he's going to make a really good, you know, next goal commander type of thing. Yeah. What do you think about training him type of thing? Yeah. Take, take, take him under your I don't know, bit. because <laughs> they're really adamant about no special treatment. I don't, I don't see, but that's the thing, I don't even think of it as special treatment. Well, right. I get that, but Sir Alistair would see it as special treatment. Well, Sir some Alistair, of the, Sir some Alistair, of the other guys will see it as special treatment. Of course they would, but Sir Alistair sees common courtesy as special treatment. That's I mean, true. I don't think, but I, here's the thing: like, I don't think that it is. I don't. I don't think that it's like a what random chance that like a Stark is first ranger. No. Yeah, and that it's not. It's. I don't think it's random chance that a son of a Stark is. Becomes the steward of the Lord Commander. Right. Nor do I think that, like, for. the, nor do I think that the, the, all the, um, the, blah, 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 yeah, blah, the, blah, the, blah. uh, the Lord of a Northern House is the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Uh, or mm. that a Targaryen is the Maester of the Night's Watch. Yeah. And I mean, and from the first, the prologue even, we do see that even though you're not supposed to get preferential treatment in the Night's Watch that they, they do. do. They give, yeah, Especially they, Lords. Yeah, they give Waymar Royce his first command way earlier than they should have mm-hmm. because yeah. he's a Royce and he's a knight. Yeah. yeah. And That's so, true. yeah, and so, I mean, they can't, I mean, they can't, obviously can't do the same thing for John because he's a snow and he's not like a natural born Stark. Yeah. But they can still like, you know, do some extra stuff from the same way they did Royce. Well, they also, I mean, Jormont specifically picks him to be next in command. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, that's the, the settled upon reason why he's made the Lord Stewart. Right. Is because that way he's there, he's basically there to be Lord Jormont's shadow, right? To, yeah. to say that on all the decisions that yeah. are made and all of the briefings and he everything and learn everything. Yeah. That he would learn, like Rob learned directly from Ned. Basically, gotcha. he's getting his lordly studies yeah. mm-hmm. from Gior Mormont instead of from Ned. All right. It's, a, I, it's I very know. plausible. Yeah. I, th- I don't know if it's true. I don't even no, want to propose good, that it's, it's true, thought. but I think it's an interesting. I think it's a good thought. I, I think there, thing there's that some. could have happened. Yeah, there's definitely. I think there's some, there's some decent evidence that it, it poses that it could be a, a plausible thing. Yeah. So. All right. And then we go to John gets back to the castle and. Knows what he has to do. Yes. He's got. He's on a mission. And he, on a mission. he knocks on a door the... and some hideously ugly guy opens it with like boils on his neck and his face and stuff like oh, that. It and... reminds me of um Filch and Harry Potter after he's had the the Jace oh, candy yes. and he's got, they got the like boils a... all over yep. his face. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cuz that guy's got and that guy's got one like that size on his neck. Oh, um, I thought a, that was a tumor. No, it's a I looked it up it the, the word that he used it's a sebaceous cyst. Ew. So Everybody's. it's one of those things that Dr. Pimple Popper loves. Ew. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Mention it again and you're uh-uh. leaving my house. Yeah. I'm just saying. that's, that's Mention what... it again and you're leaving my house right now. I'm not leaving. I'm just saying. That's, <laughs> what, it defined, that's what the dictionary defined it as. Yeah, so, we're done with that. Um, but so he's got that everywhere. It's gross. And... Well, first of all, whose door does John go to? Oh, it's that Maester Eamon's door. He goes to Maester Eamon's door. And he's like, Maester Eamon's sleeping, so fuck off. And John, like, sticks his foot in the door, like, like, no, 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 I'll stand here. I will will run you through, Longshanks. (laughs) He's pretty adamant about saying him, too. He was. Yeah, for being not a member of the Night's Watch, talking to a full-fledged member of the Night's Watch, he's got some serious balls. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like he thinks he's a Stark and is untouchable. <laughs> he's pretty adamant about waking up this old man in the middle of the night. I don't know. Who's about... not asleep anyway? Well, yeah. I don't know about yeah. you guys, but I get that old people don't always sleep all night. But you do not want to wake them up. Well, you John want does want to wake up because tomorrow morning will be too late. Yes, that's true. Because tomorrow morning, I think, is when the new recruits are going to get there, and then um, they'll, well, they'll, they'll, they'll graduate the them, them, them before. Yeah, the new they'll guys have already get there. made up yeah. their mind completely who's moving on, and they'll be go- they'll be going off to take their yeah. vows. Yeah. Yeah, like, but, like, first light or something like that. Yeah, so. Yeah. So he goes in and, um, Chet. Chet. Is, uh, harassing him. And there's also another guy that, that works under him as a steward. And what the hell is his name? It's like, Clytus or something? Yeah, Clytus. Clytus. I love how they make the joke that because Maester Eamon's blind, they gave him the two ugliest members of the Night's Watch yes. as his stewards since he didn't have to look at them. Yep. And Clytus. <laughs> Has like no fucking joke. chin, like it just goes yeah, from like lips to neck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> with like with like pink eyes, Cause yeah, he, yeah, because he's like part. Um, I wonder if he's like albino. Like he's that's got some thinking, albinism. Like part albino. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I think he's albino. Because he's got he's got pink eyes. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah, he's got weak pink eyes. Yeah, because he's short, bald, and chinless, and like so, like he's bald, so he doesn't have any hair. So they don't really give you like an yeah. indication that if he had like a lack of pigment or anything like that. Yeah. But I mean, he very well could have albinism if he's got like the the pink eyes because he's got no melanin to hide yeah. the blood in his skin. Yeah. Well, then he'll blend right in with the whites. Fair. That's true. He would have, as I mean, he would have blue eyes. Yeah. So, I just think of the Rat King when they talk about him from later on in the books. Oh. I don't, I don't know who the Rat King is. Oh, well, you'll get there. Yeah. Okay. Eventually, when we get to the Night Fork. Just because they're albino doesn't mean they're rats. I understand that. There I'm are just saying. people that are albino. Really? There are? I went to a college with an albino kid. He was pretty cool. He was Mexican, too. Okay. He's a Mexican okay. albino. Enough. Nice. Um, so John talks his way in. Yes. Or threatens his way in. Whichever one you want to look at. Whichever way you want to look at. It. I think he threatens yeah. his way in. Yeah. yeah. He, like, does the tact- fire. he does it tactfully, though. Yeah. I can stand here all night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can play here all night. <laughs> it's, 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 I, I don't, I might have to be somewhere in the morning. It's like, but until then, I'm just going to stand right here. Yep. <laughs> I can pull on an eyeliner. It's all good. I ain't got a paper due. Listen, so he, I can pull all day. So they go to the library. <laughs> the library. And the John library. starts a fire. Yes. Not with books. Yes. That's a good old fashioned book burning. (laughs) I knew you were going. Ah, book burnings. He's he's, he's throwing shade at me. Yes, I am. I picked it up and turned it into a lamp. (laughs) Lamp shade. (laughs) (laughs) Good fucking lord. And so Chet goes and gets Maester Eamon. John apologizes for waking him up. Maester Eamon's like, eh, I wasn't sleeping. Like, I find myself needing less and less sleep as I get older. Yep. And laying awake, thinking of things that happened 50 years ago and I things like, I would change and things I wouldn't yeah, change. Spend half the night yeah. with ghosts. Yep. All I can think of also, like, every time Maester Eamon talks, like, I hear the show Maester's voice in my head. I because he did, he did a really good job with yeah. it. He did a very so. good job, yeah. I love that. And so John has a request of Maester Eamon. To save a boy's life. To save a boy's life, because that's apparently what the books are about. Saving <laughs> people's lives. Oh, oh, a game even of protecting ev- children? Even though everybody fucking dies. The game, the game of protecting children. <laughs> yeah. And they're all bad at it. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Very Except bad at this it. boy's still alive, apparently. For now. Yeah, for now. Yeah. So, John makes the argument, we'll talk about it in detail, but essentially his argument is it takes all types of people to make a castle work. Yes. So, the Night's Watch needs all kinds of people. Why kill off one who can do certain things just because he can't do other things? When yeah. he's the only one of the few people that can. Right. Read. He's like, him and John are like the only ones that can read. I mean, read, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and they have a fucking library. And yeah. how many of the adults can read, too? Yeah. Ma- so, n- neither of Maester Eamon's stewards can read or write. Yeah. Well, Chet, so which means nothing Klein new is getting eyes. written. Yeah. Right. He has bad yeah. eyes, weak eyes. We can't read. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Chet just can't read because he's an ignorant piece of shit. Yeah. Which he shows off many a time during this conversation. Yeah, he does. He's oh my a, God, what, that guy. What's he called? The dirt people. He is definitely a dirt people. He's a dirt people. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a dirt people. <laughs> he's the definition of the dirt people. <laughs> oh yeah, so, with a bad attitude. Well, at all. I I do find a little bit strange is everyone. It's just their name. Every time they talk about Sam, it's always Samwell Tarly. Yes. I don't know if they're doing that as an insult because you leave your names behind once you come to the wall. But well, not really. Not. Well, right, but that's what they say is, and he's always Samwell Tarly. Well, yeah, nobody else has a name. Like, really, like, I mean, like, John's not yeah, John they, Stark, he's John Snow, so he didn't really have a name, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they still call Lord Commander Jor Mormont, he still has his name. Right, that's true. Benjen is still Benjen, Benjen Stark. Stark. Um, so, I mean, like, other people, like, Maester Aemon, we don't know his last name at this point. Targaryen. Because, right, because at this point, his identity is still a secret from us. Yeah. We don't learn that until later on. Yeah. Who he actually is. Right. That he's actually a Targaryen. So there's a reason he doesn't go by his last name. I yeah. feel like there's a majority of people that are in this this 
era of time that don't have last names either at all. Like, well, I mean, they, have, every, they have last names, but I feel like, but yeah, but I feel like every farmer is not going to have a last name. Well, yeah, I mean, their names are like Smith, right? Because yeah. like you're the Smith's son. Yeah, yep. or Banners because right. they yeah. make Banners, or you're Baker because you're, you're the Baker. Yeah. yeah. Or it's, it's one of those the things, basic like, stuff. It's whatever you do for a living, that's your last name. Yeah, yeah or your last name's Johnson, because you're John's son. Yep. Yeah. And I remember, yeah. like, in, also in the prologue, like, Will and Garrett didn't have last names, but that's so true. Waymar Royce certainly did. Yeah. Yes. So if they have a last name, and the nice watch... It just watch, means they're more important. So. Right. They're from I think it's the like more, a homage to the house. Yeah, they're more important people. Yeah. yeah. They're not dirt people. So they need to be not respected. They need to be respected, right. yeah. Yeah. And that it's a homage to the household that they came from. Like, we're not just... Like, even you though, sent us even though they're supposed to strip the names, though. Yeah. But well, it's, I mean, like, they're, they're like, don't, it's not about stripping the name. It's about they can't hold lands or inherit. Yeah. So he can still be William R. Royce, but he can't inherit Royce lands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he can't marry and have a child and pass on the Royce name. Right. But he can still have the name Royce. Right. And still get the respect that comes with being a Royce. Like, if he were sent to court on the on on behalf of the Night's Watch, Instead you can certainly say, you can certainly be sure that he would introduce himself as Sir Waymar Royce of the, of Night's, the Watch. Night's Watch. Yeah, mm-hmm. and because he he would know that the people of the King's Landing would know the name Royce. Right. So. That's fair. So, but why did he go to Maester Aemon instead of the Lord Commander? Um, I feel like. The maester is a more approachable person overall than the lord. Because, like, if you have something with the lord commander, it's got to be something serious and dire. The maester right. is something you can, or someone you would be able to go to for like pretty much anything. Like, maybe not necessarily in the middle of the night, right? But you are more likely to get an audience with the maester for pretty much anything as opposed to the, the lord commander. Because if it's not like a serious business, he's got a ton of other shit that he needs to do. Plus, he tells us why because. He knows exactly where Samwell can fit that too. within the Night's Watch, mm-hmm. assisting Maester Aemon because he can read and write, mm-hmm. because he can do sums. Yeah. Yeah, like he's and good he'd be, at math. And he'd be good with the ravens because Ghost took to him immediately. Yeah. And apparently he read an encyclopedia because he read the entire library that uh, 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 Tarly had. I'm sure it's bigger than an encyclopedia. I'm sure that Horn Hill had a giant a really fucking nice library. They probably had like three sets of encyclopedias. <laughs> They probably had a really nice library. Oh, they did. Yeah, they definitely did. They probably had all the books a huge there. room with floor to ceiling books all mm-hmm. over the place. Yes. Like, like in Beauty and the Beast. I knew that was coming. <sighs> I knew I that was it. coming. I yeah, was picturing favorite. it in my head. I'm like, don't say it. Nope. Don't say it. Yeah, <laughs> and here it comes out of her mouth. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, that Disney <laughs> reference for the day. Uh, yeah. All right. Get over it. <laughs> it's gonna happen every time. It is most fucking likely. Yeah. So John starts off by making doing an interesting an interesting gambit, shall we say? Yeah. When I taught what Maester Lewin taught me that a maester wears a chain to remind him that his life is a service. Yes, yeah. and I like the way that I was yeah. when I was reading it. It sounds like they're they're small, like they're like. It's because it keeps using the phrase co- or the word collar. Yeah, it's not using the phrase like necklace or neck chain or something like that. Like how the show shows you that they have yeah, this the- giant fucking chain that goes down to their waist. Yeah, right. like and it's loops just around a couple times. Yeah, yeah, it's literally just like a small thing that goes around their neck, and it's to tell them that they're in servitude to the realm. Yep. Yeah. So it's more like a slave collar than anything, even though That's, it's not really it's a slave supposed collar. To be, it's supposed to be designed to resemble a slave collar. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, yeah. I like that at the same time, and I'm just like, I wish the show had been more true to that aspect and made it look Well, they like had that. to make it more obvious. So right, so like Pycelle who was with like who. his fucking huge, yeah. giant, like, thug chains. That's true. Yeah, his paper mache. <laughs> yeah. Christmas rings, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> spray painted different colors, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah. how he made them. And John, yeah. and John makes the argument that, um, again, that... It takes all types, right? So you can't just make your chain with just, like, tin and steel and iron. Mm-hmm. You also need to have gold and platinum and valerian steel and everything yep. else to make the chain long enough to fit. Yeah. And just like, you know, just like a castle needs knights and a lord, it also needs farmers and people to do the books and draw the baths and yep. put the horses on the put the shoes on the horses and, and, to hodor and clean up the stables. And people to hodor. Lots of hodoring. Yeah. <laughs> and it needs whores and everything. Yeah. yeah. It needs all heavy. the cogs or the clock's not gonna work. It needs all yes. the it needs, yeah, it needs all the links in the chain. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense 
to just let Sam die for no reason because he can't fight with a sword yep. mm-hmm. when he can do these other things that are incredibly valuable to the Night's Watch. Maybe even more so in the right. long run. Because yeah. how often do you get somebody up north who can do yeah. right? Yeah, how often do, do you... Exactly. And then... Like, so he's, and he's telling him, like, you know, like, he'd be a great steward, and Chet gets all fucking offended, like, are you saying this cravenous bastard can be a steward? Like, a steward's not an easy job, I've got lots of stuff I gotta do. I know people who are packing <laughs> smart, and I look at them and I say, can you do my job? And they're like, no, and I said, then shut the fuck up. Yeah, exactly. It's the exact same thing. Because he's like, well, yeah. can he hunt, and can he do this, and can he do that? Because I have to do all those things, and John's like, no, he can't do that. No, but you know what he can do, what he can do, fucking Chet? He can fucking read. Yeah, <laughs> more than exactly. he can do. <laughs> Can you fucking read and write, Chet? No, you can't, so shut your fucking ugly face. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fuck your face. Yeah, it's the exact ar- argument I get about my job all the time. Yeah. So I, ca- I completely get where he's coming from. I can't from. even do your fucking yeah. job, and I'm in the same field as you. Yeah, yeah. but yours is animal, mine is right. human. Right. Yeah. So Maester Eamon is like, ah, very good young Padawan. Oh, God. Yeah. Your mind is just as deft as your blade. Maester Lewin taught you well. Yeah, I'm not so much I like the praise of Maester Lewin in the Shepherd. I mean, like, it's fair, he deserves it, but Lewin's a dumbass. Well, yeah, but, re- okay, remember, Maester Eamon's blind, so he may not have to worry about seeing all the dick pics that Maester Lewin is yeah. sending around. That's true. So, you know, he's probably not they, terribly they offended sent by it the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sent him a braille thing. He <laughs> sent him a braille thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Can you imagine the difficulty of having to write in Braille in that time because you have to write it upside down or backwards no, on a piece of paper? No, because Braille is uh, I, dense. So you have to turn the piece of paper over and just put little... Yes, I'm saying, you have to write it backwards. You have to write so it you, backwards so we don't oh, so it over, right. it writes forwards. That's right. You have yeah. to, like, that's fucking difficult. Gotta be confusing, which is probably why they don't do it. Yeah. I was learning how to read Braille when I was a kid. I wish I didn't stop. I just play with the little things read. on the bathroom science and <laughs> stuff around I would love to be buildings. able to read in the dark. <laughs> be nice. Like the book of Eli where he's got the last Bible and yeah. the guy finally gets the Bible from him. He's like, yeah, I got the fucking Bible. I can control everybody. He opens up Braille. <laughs> 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 so he can't fucking use it anymore. <laughs> Killed the only guy that could read Braille. Yep. Actually, no. His wife could read Braille, but she wouldn't read it for him. Yep. That was true. Okay. Anyway, back to on topic. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Doing a little bit of on topic this. I'm sorry. That um, one was my fault. <laughs> yep. And she didn't do your job. No. No. No, I didn't. She's she just, not. She just, I ran with it. She just went you with it. You know she's not going to do my job. <laughs> I can't do your job. I don't have that kind of discipline. <laughs> All right. So John's like, does that mean you'll. And make sure he's like, it means it. I'll think about what you said, Jon Snow. Yeah, I'll think about it. And says, Chet, please show our young friend to the door. I'm going to go to bed now. I think it's time for bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, during this whole conversation, Chet's just being a douche. Yeah. It really is, though. Like, jumping, like, like Maester Amen is, like, thinking about the whole thing, right? So he's got Chet, who is supposed to be, like, helping him out with, like, the important thinking stuff of the Night's Watch. Jesus. And Maester Raymond is like, Chet, Chet, what would you have us do with a, a trainee like Sam? And he's like, well, I just fucking let him die because that's what the gods want if the gods want it. And John's like, you're a fucking retard, yeah. you moron. <laughs> like, just because he's not good at fighting doesn't mean he's not good at something. <laughs> like, right. John's like legit, like, to a brother of the Night's Watch, as a trainee, John's like, you're a fucking idiot. Shut yeah. up. Yeah. Just- <laughs> John's got some serious balls. He yes, does. He does. For a trainee. For a 15-year-old, for for a a 15 trainee. Year old trainee it has to in the be Night's something Watch. with the training he's had. Uh, it's because uh, he's he's a, a pampered fall. lordling that has better everything than everybody else there. For someone who's not a lordling. Yeah. I mean, he's a he's a cocky 15-year-old kid who grew up rich. Yeah. With a little bit of a chip was, on yeah. with also also with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. I mean he's a bastard, but he's also been raised by He's the bastard of the hand of the king. Yeah. You know, so Yeah. If you're gonna be it's like it's like Tyrion, like if you're gonna be a dwarf, it's good to be the dwarf. Yep. If you're gonna be a, a bastard, bastard, it's good to be the the, the hands bastard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Have some power behind you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> your your dad's like the most powerful man in the realm. Yes. But yeah, I like that John is, I mean, his his arrogance and his cockiness kind of, it it's good for him a little bit, though, too, because if he didn't have the confidence that he has, 
both Maester Eamon and Chet being like, you know, well, why should we do this? Like, they're they're kind of against him, like devil's advocate. I don't, I don't think Maester Eamon. No, I think Maester Eamon want. I think Major Eamon 100% agrees with John. Yeah. But he wants John. Again, this goes back to the whole, why is John here? Yes. Right. Is John here to get specific types of training? Which I think is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Because Maester Eamon, I don't think, is against John's idea. I think he knows what John's asking Mm -hmm. from the beginning. I think he completely agrees with John. But I think he wants John to make the best case for it. Like, show me your brain thinking skills. Yeah, Let's see what like, you got. Yeah, and so, but he has that, so he's kind of, like, I feel like he's, like, at that point, the maester's playing devil's advocate. He's not trying to disagree with him, but he's trying to get him to think more about it and bring his arguments well, forward think, and more he, he, stronger. I think. He, wants, he wants John to make the best argument possible. Yeah, and then he's, but he's, so he's got the one guy who's kind of, like, just questioning him, like, why? Well, why? And then he's got the other guy that's like, well, you're fucking wrong, because that's my job and it's not easy. Yeah. So he's got these two people who are, like, against him, because one's not against him per se but is badgering him a little and to get him to and he just he just still has this really strong well-founded argument that he brings forth to it right he needs and, that cockiness yeah. i mean yes it needs to be tempered but he needs that cockiness because he's got things he needs to accomplish and yeah. he needs to yeah. be able to and he needs the take to charge help. to get shit done mm-hmm. like get sam saved and get sam into the night's watch he needs to be able to have the ability and the balls to go and do that. Yeah. Okay, now I have a question. This goes back to before. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, where did John get the idea to join the Night Swatch? Did somebody plant it in his ear? Or did he just decide to do it? What if this whole thing was somebody else's plan and John doesn't know it? Well, that's that's also awesome. That's an interesting possibility. And he's just riding the wave thinking it was his idea. Right. Because- and then Alistair is being like Professor Snape where he's actually keeping an eye on him, but he just hates his guts. Okay, I, I, like- I was with you until the Alistair part. <laughs> yeah. Because I could tell... No, because that was, I that was make, a right, separate because, thought. That was right, a separate because, thought. Because, because yes, John, cause John grows up hearing the stories of the valor of the Night's Watch. Yes. The man who stand at the end of the world protect us from the Grumpkins and the Snarks and the yeah. others. And his uncle's first ranger who comes back with really awesome fucking first yeah. ranger stories. Right. So I can see where it's all been in the planning to basically teach John about the valor you can earn at the Night's Watch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that that's a place where he can do that. Well, I was thinking about From that a young age. Um, and Catelyn's like, yeah, go do that. That's yeah. interesting. Well, I was thinking because of what you said about Ned talking to yeah. Mormont. And if it was all just one giant plan and John had no idea, he thought it was of his own mm-hmm. That's an And then really want him to go, though. <sighs> well, I mean, well we, who we get, really get, wants their kid to go se- away to college? We get one sentence from Ned That's about fair. that over 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. That's so fair. we don't know for certain. I mean, that he never wanted them. Right. So uh, that's an interesting. It's an, I would not put it beyond plausibility that, like, John was kind of like angled towards wanting to go join the Night's Watch. Okay. I could see that as a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, no, I was just... My first thought was, like, Alistair was reminding me a lot of Professor Snape. He hates the kids, you know, he's gonna be cocky about it. But what if it was because he knew about this plan to have John in there and he didn't like the plan, and so he was just gonna make John's life miserable? I mean... Kind of thing. I'm, I'm... I think we're both with you until you get to that Alistair being Snape part because well no Snape's- that was that was just yeah. a comparison but yeah. like if Alistair if there was a plan and Alistair knew about it and he didn't like it he's gonna treat this kid with more shit than he treats the other kids just and like from, Snape and, does to d- Potter right yeah and, and Potter from does the time Snape a lot too and from the time. John's there, Alistair's up his ass because he's just a sassy lordling. I feel like Alistair's not important enough to know about that though like i don't feel like no he is because he's in the command meetings yeah is he yeah, yeah. okay because like, he's, the, ma- he's the master of arms he's he's the sir roderick of the of castle black okay i was because like, i don't I, I, so it's I plausible think pro- it's definitely plausible okay. absolutely okay Thank and you, you got to remember. So <laughs> like, your own tinfoil? i just and you got and you also got to remember there are other things too like so mance raider has decided that as ju- just as john is coming to join the night's watch all of a sudden, now Mance Raiders on the move, marching towards the wall with an army. Yeah. So just, just maybe by he's happenstance, go- at the yeah. same time that Jon Snow, the young bastard of Winterfell, is making his way to the Night's Watch. So you think maybe they're going to go pick him up on the taxi and say, "We're going on an adventure." <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh 
okay, all right. But yeah, I mean, <sighs> oh, yeah. There's a lot of coincidences going on, okay, at or near the wall, and I can't get it out of my mind that John is there. For a reason. For a reason. For training. Thank you. <laughs> even though he thinks that he made the choice. Like, I can't help but think that it's possible that, like, he was guided there. I have a slightly different thought of, of that. Of course not that, you not, do, because well, you have to be a contrarian. I do. But not that... I, I feel like <laughs> he chose that on his own, though. Like, I feel like he heard of all the stories of the Valor. I feel like he chose it on his own, but that they chose to get that training for him and to help him with that training... I don't think he was guided into that thought process. Like, well, I don't. I don't think this one planted it in his ear. I think he thought well, about no, it himself. Well, no, just hearing all the stories yeah. and everything. It was to encourage his thinking to get into the night's place. Right. But I don't think it was like the way that you're saying it makes it sound like someone was whispering that in his ear while he was. No, 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 no. What no. she's what she's saying no, is somebody just, wanted Jon Snow to go to the wall. Yeah. I don't think anyone it's wants just, him to go to the it's wall. It's the power of suggestion. Is yeah. that what I'm? Yeah. 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 But I don't think anyone wanted him to do, except maybe Catelyn. Of course, Catelyn wanted him to go. Well, I don't if, think if they wanted, wanted to get that. him there to get him the training he needed because he couldn't get it in Winterfell and it just so happened to coincide with the same time. Or because they know Ned that the went. wars to come are coming with the and others they and they w- need the they need the Jon Snow to be there to be the, the overall commander of the armies. Well, yeah, but I still don't think someone suggested that to him. I think he came up with it on his own. That uh, he decided you're, you're, that on his right, own. You're, you're playing this whole on his own thing too much. What she's saying is, yes, he came up with the idea to go. And then they just enforced it. No. What she's saying is, there's a reason, like, Jon Snow, like, not everybody in, like, what she's saying is not every kid is taught all about the valor of the Night's Watch. Mm-hmm. What she's saying is, when people talked, when certain people talked to Jon Snow about the Night's Watch, they played it up and oh, the okay. honor and the valor that could be earned there mm-hmm. so that Jon would come to see that as a very viable option because he needs to go there. Okay. Kind of like companies who are like, oh, our company has all these great benefits, blah, 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 you should come work for us. And they're like, okay, yeah, this is a great idea. I'm going to go for it. And then they get there and it's a really shitty company. Or you're like, late, okay. or you're like, like when your kid's younger, you buy your kid a chemistry set and you let them do little sciencey things and then all of a sudden they're a rich engineer. Okay. So like the same idea. Okay. Okay. That's right. what she's talking about. All right. I can, Does I that can, make again, more sense? Yeah, I mean, I can and now that. It, now that it's been mansplained to yes, her, she yes, has it. Yes, yeah. I, I need some mansplaining <laughs> once in a while. I'm a woman in a man's or world. Every, I'm going to fucking slap you. I'm, I'm a woman in a man's world. Come on. How many times do you have to repeat exactly the thing I say and say it's not the same thing? Because <laughs> in my mind, Apparently it's not the same thing. Apparently every episode she has to do that. It's because in my mind it's not the same thing. Like, it's just, it doesn't... Compute. It doesn't uh, compute. Does not compute. Yes, it does not compute. <laughs> do not disassemble. Does not compute. Okay. Oh, but it's a good theory. We, have, we, do have, we okay. have to disapp- disassemble the argument to make it compute the right way. But uh, that's a good tinfoil. I do like. I, I, like I do like that idea okay. that, that yeah that John was guided to thinking of going to the Night's Watch. I absolutely okay. do. Which would play along with the whole we're Ned and Gior in cahoots to yeah. make sure that John got the mm-hmm. training he needed as a lord yeah. type of thing. Yeah, I completely agree that that's And Gior is like sending a raven every couple years. Hey, hey, your son's still interested in coming up here? <laughs> right. <laughs> got an opening I, for yeah. a steward of the lord. <laughs> yeah. I, I, can, I can groom him myself, man. <laughs> like, uh, he's probably going to be upset because we're not going to make him a ranger, but uh, yeah, we'll straighten it out. Don't yeah. you See, worry. I feel like, though, too, I feel like this conversation that he has with Lewin... Um, because John wants to be a ranger so badly and that's all he's ever wanted, I feel like him going there, they probably had a plan of making him a ranger because that's all he wanted to do. And that's what he's, and he's good. He's like, he's the best fighter that they have. No, but he wouldn't get the, but, he, uh, wouldn't get he, it right he, off the he though. needs the lordly training. Like, yes, yeah. he's a good fighter, but John isn't going there to be like, John isn't going there to be a ranger. Like, yeah, you can like, ju- like he was specifically picked out to not be a ranger. He was thinking we picked out to be the leader. I know, but I feel like that this conversation had a huge play in that. Like I feel It because, probably did yeah. because Well that's what I'm saying. That's hear. what I'm saying because I, I They wanted to hear his political side, see right. how well yeah. he can argue a good argument. Right. Yeah. Instead Ned, of Ned, saying no Ned, Sam's diplomatic. gonna say or yeah. yes he can go, it's a good idea, yeah. let's go get him. Yeah. Yeah. Ned, Ned probably wrote up like, yeah, he's a smart kid uh, been teaching him about being a lord and stuff like that and how to settle disputes Daddy and things like that. Daddy filled out his college application. Yeah, but yeah, the thing Daddy is, is that you don't, 
you don't hire a person. I mean, like, I know he's not being hired, but, I mean, he can leave. Like, he's allowed to leave. If he knows that yeah. he's not going to be a ranger and that's all he's ever wanted to do, he can just fucking take but off like he almost did. they're banking on him being loyal and noble or whatever the yeah. word is. Yeah, like, but the thing is, like, is that, Ned, and the, he's, he's the, one of the places that do. I'm interviewing at explained it to me okay. this way. No, it, it, it goes with this. It explained it to me this way. You hire someone for the position that they want and they don't leave because you're giving them what they fit best in, where their strong suits are, and you're not taking a person who's bad at math and making them do accounting all fucking day because they're going to quit. Right, they don't I care that you understand that, but the, the wall doesn't care. If they think you need you do better as a steward, they're going to make you a steward. Well, Whether yeah, or not you want to be a ranger. I just don't think John was ever going to be a ranger. I think that they were they would have planned to make him a ranger until um he spoke with Eamon and Eamon's like, Well, I mean, yeah, he's a great fighter, but you have just as strong a mind. So you would be better doing something someplace else. Right. And I think well, that, he's and always I think had that, the hope of being I think a Eamon, ranger. I think Eamon and Jor already knew that before this. Okay. Look how he was able to convince the kids to not go after Sam. Yeah. Yeah. I mean And he, that, yeah, they that, that, was, that was months still. that was months ago. So yeah. They already, they already knew all that. They Mr. Aim is just like giving him his final exam. Yeah. John okay. really wants to be a ranger and he's probably just. And that's just because yeah. John wants to be a fighter because that's who he sees himself as. Yeah. yeah. He, doesn't see him, he doesn't that, see himself as a leader. He sees himself as a fighter. Yeah. And my thought was that like, you know, him going to the wall, him wanting to be a ranger, they would have given. Shit. No, but they would have given a ranger because Royce did the same thing. Royce went to the wall yeah, and he wanted to be a ranger. Royce wasn't, he only be a ranger. wasn't a bastard though. He wasn't a bastard, but he still has, like, you know, he had the skill set to do something specific, so they put he, him in that But did he too. have the skill set? He, he had, he had, the he skill had set. a good he skill have set. He had the intelligence. Yeah, he had a good skill set, but he was too cocky about it and yeah. got him killed on his first ranging. But I think, I also think maybe daddy slipped him a couple gold coins. Oh, yeah. Let, definitely. Yeah. But John didn't have that. John has to fight for it, but they also know John will fight for it and get what he needs. Yeah. Well, this is why I think that John, I think, I think Ned, possibly had them single John out for steward and learning to be a, a, a commander mm-hmm. from the very beginning. Okay. So you think that, like, I mean... I, I think that John went up there wanting to be a ranger, but John was never going to be a ranger. Yeah, like, they got I, him, yeah. and after the first couple of weeks when he turned with around the, and started training other people... Not even that, not even that. With, with the education mm-hmm. that John got, Before which he was even just as good the as the as the lord as the command as the lord of Winterfell's training. Yeah. That there was no way he was going to just be a ranger. But they still made Benjamin Stark first ranger. They made him he first could have done ranger. the same thing. Right, but that had uh, the name's got nothing to do with it. I know, and, and that's what I'm saying. And, 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 the the and they weren't in the position of needing right, to train but, a new Lord Commander. Jorah Walmart would have been younger than fifteen years ago. Still had no still had a good fifteen years, twenty years left to live. Okay. They didn't need a new they Lord Commander. Okay. Jor Mormont's getting old now. Needs to start finding a man are, to take over for him. Are yeah. Benjamin and Jor like close to the same age. No. no. Benjamin's, Benjamin's younger than younger. Ned. Yeah, so and then so that's my thought process too is that Benjamin, Benjamin's missing. Benjamin They're has, not gonna make him first commander. Well duh, but Benjamin had the same training and the same Lord skills, right, if not the, more right, so but than John. Were, but there was no need to have a new potential Lord Commander at the time. Your moment was still young. But you could still groom him and train him on, as a steward in his own service the same way they did with but John. But then you're wasting Benjamin making him a steward for 20 years mm-hmm. when he's an amazing sword. Whereas Gior knows now he's getting old. He's going to need a replacement soon. He's getting old. He's in his 70s. And just okay. recently, Benjen has gone missing. Right. So so, yeah. so he now knows. Okay, so now Gior's old enough that he needs to start thinking about who to groom to take over for him. Because he's in his 70s. Mm-hmm. He's going to die soon. Whether it be in battle or from old age. Yeah, He's it's, not going to be able to run things for yeah. much longer. So now he needs to find a replacement. And there's this young wannabe. And there's lordly. a young, a young person who's received lordly training at Winterfell. That's and coming to could the night's watch. Have the mind to actually be a leader to and take over. And has already proven that he can be a leader and unite people who right. used to be against yep. him. Exactly. Okay. We good? Somewhere. All right. Somewhere we'll be good. All right. And I think that's where we leave off. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think, like, I think oh, that covers yeah. everything. It does. And we got some pretty deep, good explanatory discussion. Yeah. I was worried up there for a second I was going to be too short, and then we threw no, really? a little bit. Then we threw, really? our, then we threw <laughs> our theories out there, and it, yeah. it was all good. All right, so we need a name. 
I'm really bad at this. <laughs> I just keep thinking of the Motley Crue song, Home Sweet Home. <laughs> no. Because it's not sweet in any fashion. <laughs> well, he did decide where his home was. He did decide where his home is. Yeah. Even though he does make a break for it later. Well, yeah, but that's a half-hearted attempt. Yeah. Yeah. And Ned had just been beheaded, and so, yeah. you know, I mean, that that's He was be, furious. That's to be expected. I like yeah, we, he had an emotional upheaval for a bit. Yeah, and they knew he would, yeah. so. All the guys knew he would. That's why they all fucking were like, don't do it, dude. I don't know. I like Benjamin's Not Dead. Benjamin's Not Dead. I like Benjamin's Not Dead. <laughs> Benjamin's not dead. It doesn't really explain the chapter. Well, no, because... two out of three, sorry. I like Benjamin's not dead. I want you to come up with something. Why? I got. I still got to vote, so... What's I know. The point of having three... Cause I, no, because I just want to hear what you, would ha- what you would have. Oh, well, I don't have anything. And there's no point in having three options if we're all going to vote for just one, so... I didn't vote for that one. No, I, mean, I, I voted for three, him. But... So Benjamin's not so dead. So Benjamin's not dead. Yeah. Hashtag Benjamin's not dead. I feel like that's part of a... I can't get behind that. I'm All sorry. Right. Anyway, so this chapter is... Benjamin's Not Dead. Yeah. Benjamin's Not Dead. Our next chapter is going to be... Tyrion, Tyrion 6. 6. Tyrion 6. The Tyrion and Bronn Roadshow begins. Yep. Indeed. Absolutely. That'll be a good time talking about that one. I think they're in the Mountains of the Moon. Yep. Yes. They're yeah, on they the way back having from a good the, time. What's it called? The, the High Road? The High Road. The High Road. I wonder if they're getting high on the high road. I'll take the road. Sorry. I wonder if they're getting high on the high road. <laughs> I don't know. They don't mention any long bottom leaf. Yeah, no mention of long bottom leaf. No. I feel like if anyone would have some, that would be Bronn. Or Tyrion. Uh, Tyrion. Tyrion would have Tyrion. 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 Tyrion's like the rich teenager. Yeah, I know. You I guarantee like, you Tyrion's got drugs. I feel like Mord would have used it. I mean, Maybe. I know he's not allowed to. But that doesn't mean he would he wouldn't have. They I wouldn't mind using this, if I were to fall same off the cells. Laws that we do. He doesn't stay in the cells. He goes in there though. That's true. He does go in there, and he does stand right at the edge. And of the like, s- like if he were high, he just like stumble and fall off, and then bye bye Mord. Would that be so bad? No. Yes, Mord's a nice guy. Did you? No, he's not. He he knelt down and broke down crying to thank Tyrion when Tyrion gave him the thing full of gold. It said so in the next chapter. Only because he didn't think he was actually going to get the gold, and he. Probably felt guilty for beating the shit out of this. Right, because it was more gold. It was more gold than he had ever seen in his entire life. Because and he ever will see in his entire life again. And Tyrion told him, "If you ever, if you know, if you ever get tired of Lady Lysa, just present yourself a Casterly Rock, and I'll give you more of what I owe you." And like, more got on his knees and like thanked him and cried. I still don't. Think I feel like a good we'll we'll talk about it. I feel like Tyrion it, would throw him in a jail cell. <laughs> no, <laughs> pay him back a little. L- Lannisters always pay their debts. I'm pretty sure part of his debt is that being locked Why? in jail cell being starved for three Moore days. Didn't Moore throw... was just doing... Yeah, but Moore tortured him by not letting him eat for two days. Which Moore was probably ordered to do. I think that was more of Moore's sick, sick amusement. I don't think so. We'll get, we to, we'll get to that, that next, next chapter. chapter. But, okay. But, uh, yes, so our next chapter is Tyrion 6, 5, yep, 4, six, 3, 2, six, 1, 6. 6. <laughs> okay, we're just going to count. It is the final <laughs> countdown! No. That is not even close to how you sing that. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm still okay with it. But so we I'm will not. catch you guys then. Bye. Bye. We didn't do any promo. Yeah, there was no promo in there. Oh, hey, we got to put some promo in here. Yeah, we do. Sorry, so we're not was, done yet, guys. Just, Hi, how's it going? <laughs> I was just thinking, wait, I didn't say my Twitter handle. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait a minute, we didn't do any of that. We didn't thank the patrons at the beginning yeah, of the episode either. Yeah, uh, so bad patrons, sir. You're you're off your ball. You're off the ball today. You're off your ball. You know, you guys can help out a little bit. I'm, I that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, I'm reminding. So yeah, if you want to become a patron like our cool patrons, uh, for a dollar a month, you can get early access to all the shows. You can get uncut versions of each mm-hmm. episode. Yeah. Crazy as it seems. Yeah, I don't know why you want that. Um, and for five dollars a month, you can come on the show and record an episode with us, just like uh, the episode that you just listened to with Ben. Yeah. Yes. Patron Ben, where we went over Edder Ten for seventy-five hours. It's good. This one is a seventy-five hour one. <laughs> it was only two after editing. <laughs> it was only two after editing it down. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was a good chapter, though. It was fun. It was hilarious. It was a good chapter. Yeah. Um, other than that, uh, you can, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash ironwood. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to find us on the webs, you can go to iceandfirepod.com. Uh, if you want to get us on Twitter, I am at Maester Ironwood. I am at Widow Wolfsbane. And I'm at Lady underscore Wyvern. 
And our next chapter is going to be Tyrion six. Tyrion six. Tyrion and Bronn on the road, on the high road, on the low road. On the road again. You can also just sure you'll, just, you'll sing that country <laughs> yeah. song, but not the one I brought. Whatever. Whatever. No, that's right. Be sour about it. I will. Don't you fucking worry about it. <laughs> you can also find us pretty much everywhere with Deep hashtag in the heart ice and fire. Of Texas. It's yeah. ice and fire pod. I know. I was waiting for him to stop. <laughs> You can find us anywhere with hashtag Ice and Fire Pod. <laughs> and so until we meet you again in Tyrion on the high road with the Stone Clan, we will catch you then. Bye. Bye. Bye guys.